Hey, hey, you feel that? Is that my phone? No, no, wait. That's the, that's the pile. Is it time to dig into the pile? What's in the pile? Miles, come here. What's in that pile? It's always a little bit overwhelming looking at this pile. I don't even know what I want to make, like even a little bit. This could be something interesting. This is a piece of poplar. It's a maybe. It could be like a good bowl or something, good bowl or platter. One of the benefits of this pile is it, it's good for climbing and maneuvering and getting additional angles. There's a piece of uh, Utah juniper here that I've really wanted to make into something very special. And I don't know if it's large enough, but we're not gonna touch this. Shelf of chaos, is there anything in the shelf of chaos? This is where it's always uncomfortable for me is I want to like talk to the wood, but I, I recognize I need to talk to you. This piece, get out of it. Get out of it. This piece right here has been just screaming, Justin, please turn me into a vase. It's a piece of English walnut, and I have actually already used English walnut on this channel for a, a platter video where I made some, some pumpkin loaves. Watch that if you haven't, they were delicious. And so I kind of hesitated for a while, like you just did a video with this same wood. This kind of feels perfect because I've wanted to do an episode of this series where we just hang out and chat, answer some questions that I get asked a lot since a lot of you are just barely getting to know me. Hi, and I think this will be nice. So. We'll throw this big old chonker on the lathe. It's got a nice crotch here. Look at that, that's really wonderful. This will be fun. And uh, let's get to know each other a little bit better. This is gonna be cool. So I'm just trying to figure out which end I want to be the bottom and which end I want to be the top. Uh, I wanna to preserve as much of this crotch as possible. I think this needs to be the top. This might be a mistake, but we'll find out. That is not aligned well. Let's bring it in toward me a little bit. We want to start this on their slowest speed and bring it up very, yeah. So we've got some loose bark here. This can be tricky. So I'm going to start peeling some of this off. So one of the questions, one of the first questions I usually get is, do you do this for a living? Are you a professional woodworker? Is this where you get most of your money? Do you sell your work? That type of stuff. And the answer is complicated. <laughs> so. If you can tell the bark is going to come off in chunks like this, it's always safer to do it before you start turning. It will have a tendency to just fly off the lathe. Like this big chunk right here would just come off the lathe in one big piece. And that could hit you in the face, chest, or genitals. None of which would be ideal. So it's always safer to grab your most dinged up chisel and just start prying. Back to the question at hand. What's your deal? What do you do for work? So I had a marketing career for over a decade. And you know, I just kind of fell into it. I didn't go to school for marketing. I studied political science at college of all things. Which is a whole other story itself. So I picked up woodworking as a hobby. Never intended to make it any kind of career of any way, shape, or form. My real primary hobby at the time was trail running. I was doing a lot of trail running. A lot of ultra marathons and the like. And while out on a run one day, if you see my YouTube short about the bracelet beads, then you've heard this story. But I was out on a trail run. On this run, I passed by this tree. And I've probably passed this tree thousands of times, quite literally this exact tree hundreds of times, and this type of tree thousands of times. But I never noticed it before. And for some reason, it just kind of caught my eye. So I stopped and took a closer look. I don't know what it was about it. It was a beautiful tree, but something about it that day just pulled me in. I plucked some of the leaves and looked at them closer. Noticed how unique and interesting they were and looked at its bark and I felt it. It felt like a really solid, interesting tree and its seeds were these fuzzy, curly things. And I just had this moment of like, this is a really cool tree. I don't know what kind of tree this is. So I came down off the mountain. And I got home. And I looked it up. This is going to be pretty. We're getting closer. And I finally find out the type of tree that it is. It's called the Curleaf Mountain Mahogany. It's a tree native to my area. And I'm just blown away by how fascinating and unique this tree, this tree is. 
I'm reading about its properties, like where it grows and how it reproduces, all the traditional indigenous uses that it has. So I kind of want to readjust this a little bit and move it this way because we're cutting into clean wood here and we still have a bit to go here just to try to like save a bit of clean wood if we can. Uh, so this will give us a little bit of a wobble wobble, but that's okay. Yeah, I think that's what I want. Let's take a look at that. Okay, yeah, we got a wobble wobble going, but that's what to be expected. Where was I? Ah, yes. So I'm learning all about this tree. If you would have come to me and said, Justin, you know what you're gonna find really cool? Trees. Before that moment, I would have, I would have said, oh yeah, trees are kind of cool, I guess, but like, really? But what I discovered, and this, this is a feeling that I've loved sharing with other people, these are things that surround us every day. We know they're there, but so many of us don't really know them. We don't know their names. We don't know where they belong. Do they belong here? Were they brought here from somewhere else? What are their uses? And one of the things that really sparked my curiosity was what does the wood look like? I'd never worked with wood before. I was not a woodworker. I've always been naturally drawn to things made out of wood. I think they're really beautiful. Wood tones are just naturally appealing to me. I feel at home in a wood paneled room. I know the same handful of species we all know. We all have seen oak and maple, cherry and walnut. What, what about these trees that I see every day and love? What does their wood look like? So I went back into the mountains and I found a, a dead log from this tree lying on the mountainside and I brought it home. It was incredible, it was so pretty. It was this rich red auburn color. It was so hard and dense. I was hooked, I was immediately hooked. So I started to learn how to woodwork. I watched a YouTube video on how to carve a spoon. I bought some spoon carving tools and I carved the world's ugliest spoon. I bought a bandsaw and just started cutting different species of wood into planks to see what the wood looked like on the inside. So it was a hobby that was driven by this curiosity for and love for trees. Fast forward to spring 2021. I was still in my marketing career. Like a lot of people, I'd been working from home for about a year. A job I was essentially working 16 hour days, seven days a week. And I just had a real, I had a real moment where I realized You haven't, you've never wanted to do this for your job. Why are you still here? I made a rash move and I quit my job with no backup plan. This is really, really pretty. I am screaming. So now what I'm gonna do is turn down a little tenon or like a small foot right there. That allows us to flip it around, hold it from the bottom and we can shape the rest of it and then drill a hole in the top uh, to complete our vase. And I can already tell when the oil finish gets added, it's gonna be incredible. So yeah, I quit my job. I picked up a couple freelance marketing gigs to help stem the bleeding of my savings and bled a lot of my savings. But I just thought, why not take a swing and gamble on yourself? But I didn't know what that swing was gonna be. Uh, part of me thought maybe I'll go back to working on my novel. I had written a novel uh, uh, five or six years ago that I was really proud of, but that did need some more work. Part of me thought maybe I'll spin up some sort of woodworking business. I, I didn't know, but I needed to try something. And one of the things I tried was making TikToks. Just for fun. So I did, I started taking woodworking footage and talking about trees, and before I knew it, I grew an audience there. And that's how the state tree map came to be. I'd always wanted to make a map of the US out of native trees. I actually didn't want to do official state trees because so many states share the same tree. But I had a really cool piece of quaking aspen in my garage. That's Utah's official state tree. That's where I'm from. So I thought, why not just do official state trees? And the rest is history. So back to the original question at hand. What's my job? It's this now. I'm a full-time content creator. I was able to quit my last freelance job this summer, and now hopefully that I've started to grow an audience here on YouTube, uh, I feel a lot more secure in being able to do this 
just entirely full time. And it's been, a, it's been a ton of fun. It's been really creative, really rewarding for me, coming up with fun new video ideas, the process of editing, narrating, scripting, all that stuff. I love it so much. And I love being able to share this passion of learning about trees with, with so many people. So one of the other questions I do get asked a lot is, hey, I love your stuff, I'd love to buy it. Why is your website always sold out? Or if one of my shorts does really well, if like a pen or a salt seller or whatever, people are always asking, hey, I wanna buy these, can I buy them? And first and foremost, that's such a huge compliment. So thank you for reaching out and asking that. Like, I feel honored that, that anyone wants to buy something I've made because I feel like I'm such a hack. But really, I'm a tree enthusiast first, content creator second, and woodworker distant third. I kind of use this as an avenue to trick people into learning about trees. And so I just don't spend nearly enough time in the shop making items to be able to sell them. If you look at like a breakdown of any one of my given weeks, I'd say about 5% of it is spent actually making stuff, and the rest is spent in the content creation side of things. Researching, scripting, narrating, shooting, editing, all that stuff. It's really time consuming. I love it and then I enjoy it, but it's why I don't think of myself as a woodworker first. Which brings me to the next question I get asked a lot. Hey, will you do more like how to walk through content? I'd love to learn how to make these things. I barely know what I'm doing. I'll make a video of me making a bowl and I feel so terrified to hit publish on that because I realize there are a ton of woodworkers, many of whom are on YouTube, who make more bowls in like a three day span than I've made in my entire life. So I feel incredibly unqualified to give any kind of how-to advice. Most of my videos are gonna be learning about different species of trees, learning about their uses, sometimes finding fun ways to get more uses out of them. Think like the incense cone video. Think the last time I worked with English walnut where I used those walnuts to make some pumpkin bread. There are tons of channels out there from real experts that'll have guides on how to use a lathe, how to use a scroll saw, how to hand carve something. They're gonna be a much better like walkthrough process on, on how to do that as a beginner. Uh, so I'd highly recommend checking some of their stuff out. If I can think of some of the good ones, I'll, I'll try to add them in the description. If anyone wants to add them in the comments section and tag them, that you're more than welcome to do so as well. This is fitting nice, excellent, okay. So I love this so much. Okay, making some real progress now. I need water. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this down around. I still don't know what shape I want this to be, which is usually the case at this point. So the next question about myself that I wanna answer that is less of a question and more of something that I keep getting yelled at. <laughs> How can you claim to love trees and yet make stuff out of wood? Isn't that counterintuitive? There's this tendency to treat trees differently than any other type of plant. This is gonna sound like a wild left turn for someone who just talked about how much he loves trees. But I've got a lot of comments along the lines of how on earth can you proclaim to love trees yet butcher them, or it's like you're cutting the arm off of something and making something out of its bones and talking about how much you love it, which is, it's a bit like saying, you claim you love vegetables, yet you ripped that carrot out of the soil and now you're eating it? Trees are a renewable resource. They're one of our greatest renewable resources. The reckless clearing of old growth forests that happened on this and other continents is a tragedy. I think that all of that is a problem that we need to do better at. If you think that making a dozen vases a year out of locally sourced, hand forged wood is the problem. I can go through that pile and tell you where every single one of these pieces of wood came from. And not a one of them came from a tree that I cut down. I'll tell you that much right now. I've cut down all of one trees in my life and it was a pine tree in my backyard that had died. This piece of English walnut came from a friend's backyard. It's a big, beautiful tree in her backyard. Her arborist told the whole tree needs to come down. It's sick. She pruned a few limbs off to try to give it a bit more time. Again, I know that I'm speaking to like the 5%, 90, 5% of you are, you get it. But I do want that, I think it's important for that 5% to know because you and I are on the same side here. We're both conservationists. We're both concerned about the trees and the forests here. I am really passionate about getting out of that mindset, this mindset that there are essentially two worlds. There is the world that we live in. I can just kind of live my life and that's whatever, but there's this natural preserved world that I know about, and those are the forests and the mountains and, and those areas. As long as those are untouched, then everything else is fine. And that's just not the way the world works. The average American uses five full-grown mature trees worth of wood every single year, just going about their daily life. We need to do less clear cutting, less consuming. That's the problem. That's what needs to be fixed. And this idea that, well, as long as no one ever cuts down a limb in a forest, 
near my home, then it's okay. That's a trap that I would like to encourage people away from thinking that way. Oh, this is uh, this is such a cool piece of wood. This is going to be a really good base. So another question I get asked a lot is, uh, can you tell me more about the tools that you use? You know, what kind of lathe do you recommend for a beginner? What kind of projects do you recommend I start with? I wanna I wanna make stuff out of wood. How do I get started? Like I mentioned in the beginning, I do not think of myself as an expert, so I really hesitate to ever give any advice here. I do like to recommend to start with carving because you don't need to spend a lot of money to get started. It has a very low barrier to entry. You don't need a bunch of big fancy expensive machines. A few different types of relatively inexpensive carving knives and you can get rolling. Check it out, early signs of some nice chatoyancy. Now for those who say, I really wanna get into wood turning, what kind of lathe would you recommend? Look up wood turning classes in your area. And if there are any available, I always recommend taking a class first, just to try it out. Lathes are expensive, so. And then if you find you really love it, the type of lathe that I would recommend is really gonna come down to your budget and what it is you wanna make. The size of piece that you're working with is really gonna dictate how much money you should expect to spend. So one of the other questions I get asked a lot is, what is your favorite type of wood to work with? And the answer to that one is really easy. It's gonna sound like a cop-out, but I promise you it's not. The answer is whatever wood I'm working with at that given moment. Because again, when you go back to what am I? Tree enthusiast first, content creator second, woodworker third. For me, the joy of this hobby has always been about and continues to be about the surprise of finding out what's inside. So whenever I get the chance to work with a species of wood I've never worked with before, that's my favorite thing. But even still, like it can be a log from a tree that I've worked with dozens of times, but I don't know what this one's gonna look like on the inside. It might look completely different from any, any other species that I've worked with before. And that's one of the really fun things about me for this series, What's in That Pile, is the ability to just like pick at random a log on the wall and be like, okay, let's see what this looks like. This looks like a log, we've all seen logs, what does it look like when we make it into something? Go above and beyond that and say, okay, well now what else can we do? This one, we're making it into a vase and I'm yammering on about myself, but maybe we'll make some incense. Maybe we'll make a dessert using the fruit from that tree. Maybe we'll make something from the nuts from that tree. Just make a bowl out of it and I don't know, figure out something fun to put inside that bowl. Who knows? It's just, it's so much fun. So my favorite tree genuinely is just whatever it is I'm working with at that given moment. That's the truth. All right, I'm gonna do some sanding before I drill into the top. Through grit 400. Probably go a little bit higher, but I like to sand it down to at least 400 or 320 while it's, before I start cutting into the top. Covered this already in episode one of what's in that pile. Uh, so this may be a little bit of rehash territory, but this is another question I get asked Anytime I make a vase video, how do I hollow the entire thing out? And the answer is I don't. 
The only way to hollow out something like this that has this narrow neck down to this larger base would be to basically cut off the bottom, flip this around, hollow out from the bottom, glue the bottom back on. You could do that. Waste of time in my opinion. There's no need to hollow this thing out. A hole down the middle is gonna do all I need it to do. These are primarily dry bases. I've been experimenting with putting little test tubes in there and adding a little bit of water and that does work. And drill a nice clean hole. Now that I made the first cut, I'll swap it out for the spade bit, which is longer. We're done. So I do have an extender tool that will allow this to drill even deeper. The problem is with these, especially with these narrow necked ones, is the part that it, it inserts in right there is like this thick, so it won't it won't fit inside this little tiny, little tiny hole here. Uh, yeah, so there's nothing to be done about that. All right, we're ready to add a finish, which is another question I get asked a lot. Again, for me being driven by just a curiosity about the trees themselves, I like to use finishes that have a very neutral color. I'm not looking for one that's gonna impart like a lot of a lot of additional color to this. What I've started using pretty much exclusively is walrus oil, mostly their cutting board oil. It's not made from actual walruses, if you're wondering. It says right there, no walrus is harmed, just the name of the brand. Their finishes are food safe. They're really easy to apply. That's another thing that's really big for me. This is their furniture butter. This is, uh, as you can see, it's got like a little bit of yellow to it, but it's still pretty, pretty neutral. The cutting board oil is when I'm going for something a bit more like entirely neutral, I'll use this. Uh, I use this on all the state pieces, just because the goal there is I just want to try to keep it as neutrally colored as possible. But we're going to use the furniture butter on this. This is an oil and wax finish, which makes it really nice and easy to apply. And my gut tells me this is going to be a good one. So let's bring, let's bring in for a close up. All right. So just dab some of this onto a paper towel and on we go. It's oil time, baby. Look at this. This wood has, I don't know how well you can tell here. I'll, I'll definitely get some shots here in a second, but there's like these, English walnut's really interesting in that it kind of has these like black speckled streaks all throughout that are really interesting and neat. We got that crotch right there, just this really gorgeous figure um, giving us a certain optical illusion that we do like to talk about. Chateauancy. There's even, yep, we got some curl right there too. This is, oh, I'm really, really happy with how this has turned out. Honestly, I'm kind of concerned that I have like no usable footage here. <laughs> uh, I rambled a lot. I don't know if anything I said was interesting at all, but this is gorgeous. I'm dying. I'm absolutely dying. Make sure to get, get as deep in there as we can. And buff this off. I mean, it really doesn't get much better than that. Just pulling some random log off of a pile and seeing what's inside there. I mean, look at this. Now you can definitely turn all the way through this. And I, this is a piece where I'm very tempted to do that because it feels pretty stable. The downside to that is oftentimes you'll get to that last bit and the grain will tear out and you'll have like a chunk torn out of the bottom. Grab this beat up old saw. And then just cut through those last little fibers. Yeah, you're left with that little nub there. Go zap that on the belt sander real quick. Add just a little bit of furniture butter to the bottom. And that'll do it. This is so great. Ah, oh, it makes me so happy. Let's take this inside and introduce it to its new friends. And there's our final vase. I really dig the pale brown color and those kind of little black streaks all throughout the grain. English walnut, it's so cool. I mean, I've eaten nuts from this tree how many times, but knew nothing about the tree itself and definitely had no idea that its wood looked like this. This just never gets old. Also, I hope this was a fun way to get to know me better. It was, it was fun answering those frequently asked questions, even if I did ramble more than was necessary. Ah, look at that, that crotch figures bring a lot of interesting stuff to the neck. There's even a little bit of curl down there on the base. Just so much cool stuff going on in this piece of wood, so fun. 
This is what was in the pile today, but next time we could be making anything out of any one of these pieces of wood. In fact, take a nice long look. Which piece do you think I should use next time on What's in that pile?